doing? I'm good. I'm good. I just finished up a lunch here in Nashville and driving back to uh, do some work. Oh, my goodness. So busy, busy. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time to to speak with me today, Neil. Oh, my goodness. Um, you got a lot to, to cover, and I'm going to try to do it in a, in a short amount of time because... I'm the biggest fan, I swear, of the Cadillac 3. Oh, my goodness. We're going to talk about Hillbilly, which which uh, our fans just voted number one on our station. And um, we're going hard with it because I personally have been waiting for, for this kind of song, for this song to come out from you guys. So we'll kind of dive, we'll kind of start from, like, the beginning, if that's cool with you, Neil. Like, kind of, you know, talking about how the three of you uh, came together and, and, and really your, you know, who, who you guys were listening to that kind of created this, what is now called the country fuzz uh, style that we all love about the, the Cadillac three. So with that being said, Neil, let's, let's talk about that a, a little bit. Cause I'm really curious. Why are you curious? And who were you listening to growing up that has really played the biggest influence on what the, the Cadillac three is about now? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the thing about the three of us is we all met in high school. So we have known each other since we were like 14, 15 years old. And wow. um, we're now 21. No, we're uh, we're all like 40. Um, and so, uh, um, you know, we've known each other over half our lives and we've been playing music together in some form or fashion for, for that long as well, yeah. even if it was just kind of like playing in garages and jamming together and stuff. Sorry, I've got an ambulance coming up behind me. Hang on one sec. Um, and, and so, you know, meeting each other at that age, it was like, you're doing a lot of firsts together. You know, you're hearing Tom Petty for the first time together. Mm -hmm. You're hearing Nirvana for the first time together. You're hearing Metallica for the first time together. You're hearing country music for maybe not the first time because we're all from nashville but like we're learning who these artists are for the first time kind of at yeah. that age and you know that 13 14 15 like very like memorable time in our life and at the same time you know we're we're playing our first shows at the same time and the same clubs and so there's just like everything's kind of thrown in this pot and it all gets stirred up all all at once and so I think the reason that we sound how we sound is is really because a whole lot of stuff got thrown together at the same time. And, you know, each of us have our own individual influences that are a little bit different. Like I would say, you know, Kelby came up a little more on like like he would be Metallica and like Hank Williams Jr. So it's like more country and more metal. And then like Jaron was like rage against the machine and nirvana and a lot of the like kind of like alternative and grunge rock i was a little bit more um you know like my parents cd changer was like the stones and tom petty and neil young and the beatles and things like that and so you just kind of take all of that stuff and put it together that's really kind of explain i mean it doesn't necessarily define like the words country fuzz but like all that stuff is kind of in there for why we call it country fuzz Absolutely. Well, and it's it's interesting because I mean we're gonna uh, talk about briefly uh, Tabasco and and Sweet Tea because that record was so I mean it came out after Country Fuzz and it was so I was like what is this this is a very pimped out record if I could describe it in just that way right but before getting into that I remember the first song uh, that I heard from from y'all was uh, you know as the Cadillac Three I should say the South. And yeah. even just spinning that on country radio, it really cuts through because it's so it's so different. I mean, that that rock, uh, it's so very rock heavy. And of course, you have the the collaboration, uh, the other artists on it. But I remember thinking like at the time, this is exactly what's missing on country radio. So even bringing up radio because i have to that's what i what i do i'm a music director for a radio station i have to ask you like and my assumption would be y'all don't i guess create music and write music for the purpose of radio is am i uh, is it fair for me to assume that neil yeah i mean we write the music that we like and i do think we've grown up on a lot of music that was played on the radio so yeah. i mean I, yeah. I i think there is a you know we learned from 
from songs that were radio driven songs. A lot of those artists that I named, like even if, you know, it's like Rage Against the Machine, I don't think wrote to be on the radio, but they were played on the radio. Exactly. Um, yep. You know, Tom Petty, I think kind of did. Exactly. Tom Petty did kind of write to be on the radio, but I think he also did his own thing and like things got played on the radio that maybe he didn't expect, you know? And so yeah. I guess to answer your question, it's like, no, we're not writing for radio. Um, and at the same time, we've never been anti the idea of our music being on radio. It just hasn't been on radio that much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, and with the, with that said, and I mean, I asked that question right now, Neil, because there is a conversation happening in country music right now, and especially after 2020, it seems like a lot of artists um, who have had a lot of radio play and whatnot, they've kind of, you know, pandered to that number one hit. And now they're kind of going, no, nah, I'm going back to what, it, you know, what made us fall in love with music or country or whatever it it may be. And so, and it feels like when we talk about the Cadillac 3, it just feels like y'all have always stuck to, you know, who you are as, as uh, a group, as a whole, right? Um, and I think that that's really key right now, and especially within the conversation about radio. Yeah, I think, you know, we, I guess just the age we are and like the, the music we were listening to when we came up, it was, it was like album based music, you know? And so when, when we're recording and writing, we are kind of thinking about a project as a whole, you know, yeah. it's, it's like, we still think yeah. about the idea of, you know, would these songs go together with these songs? So like you mentioned Tabasco and Sweet Tea, like that was a real effort for us to try and make something that felt cohesive from top to bottom. And, you know, I, I think we stayed like in a, it's almost like we made rules for that record. It was like, we weren't going to do certain things because we wanted it to stay super cohesive, which was just kind of a fun experiment. Um, you know, and I think it's been, we're in the middle of making a new record right now. And it's, it's been challenging if I'm being honest to like find the the version of that that feels cohesive for us this time that we're excited about um because we we like to just change things up a little bit each time you know it's like to make it uh i guess just exciting for ourselves you know it's it's like we tour so much and whatnot that it's like we we really want to feel great about the tunes and about being able to play them live and i think if if we put anything through a filter at all it's usually would we play this live more than it's anything about radio and you can feel that. Oh my goodness. I know you're on tour um a lot this year. And I'm thinking to myself, please, God, come to Canada. Um, because the record that I would just love to Country Fuzz, I have to tell you, was one of three of my favorite records that came out that year. Um, and for the reason that I mean, slow rolling. I mean, we even had we had that in high rotation. And and again, I take chances with a lot of different sounding songs and that song in particular and back home. I remember when I started spinning both of those songs, we got calls going like, who is this? What is this? Oh, my gosh, because it was so different and just the vibe of it. Right. Like that's where it became like, uh, you know, I refer to it as uh, uh, its own genre in a way that country fuzz, because those two songs in particular helped kind of open doors for other songs to be played on our station. And so, but in talking about country fuzz um, and then going to Tabasco and Sweet Tea, I was, like I said, I was stunned because you've got this like funk almost element to it. And it, 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 it almost felt really like what? what was this? It was so unexpected. And so I guess what I want to know specifically going from country fuzz, and then we'll get in, uh, into the, to the new single, uh, but going from country fuzz and then in the same year you have Tabasco and sweet tea, and maybe you've already touched on this, but did like these records, they came out in the same year. It, it, I'm wondering if the reason for that was because you couldn't make certain songs um, that appear on on Tabasco and Sweet Tea fit with Country Fuzz or vice versa. Is that kind of where and why those two projects came out maybe in the same year? It They definitely were an extension, extension of each other in the sense that the, the last few songs that got recorded for Country Fuzz were songs like The Jam and Blue El Camino, things that kind of had a little bit of a funkier beat to them. Yeah. Um, and yeah. funkier guitar things going on and whatnot. And we just were starting to tap into that 
vibe as we were finishing the Country Fuzz record, which I think led us into kind of a complete deep dive into that for the Tabasco record. So it was almost like we got a little taste of it on Country Fuzz on a couple yeah. tunes. And then and then it was like, wait a second, that could be cool. Um, let's see what else is there. And and it happened to just kind of overlap because the Country Fuzz record wasn't even out yet and we were kind of already working on the tabasco album um yeah. just because of timing stuff you know just takes a while sometimes to get albums out and um and so then we were like halfway done with the tabasco record and then the pandemic hit and we were supposed to be on this country fuzz album tour and then it just kind of never happened and so we were home and we basically just were able to wrap up that tabasco album over that first couple months of the kind of lockdown. Yeah. And then instead of sitting on it and waiting, we just decided, ah, eh, let's just put it out, you know? Um, Cause we, you didn't know how long you were going to be stuck at home and we ended up yeah. being stuck at home a really long time. So I'm glad we put it out when we did. <laughs> well, and it's like I said, the two, the two together um, in that same year, it was, it was, uh, it was really for me uh, as a fan, it was a really, a different taste of of who you guys are as the Cadillac Three, which again I appreciate so very much. Oh my gosh, it turns my my Hyundai Tucson into a Cadillac every time I put it on. It's like what is happening? It's it's a really great uh, it's a really great project, and I'm curious which out out of all the songs and albums, uh, I guess now that you're you know we're everyone's back on tour and whatnot. Um, what's the response been like? And I'm wondering as well, like. Which songs do you get the biggest response uh, from from your from your fans on tour? Yeah, so it's been interesting um, since since we got back post the pandemic. Uh, um, like a couple of the a couple of the songs that really took off streaming wise while we were home were were our ballads, and so um, "Take Me to the Bottom" oh. and "Red Lights." But yeah, a couple of the ballads were songs that really seemed to take off. It was like Take Me to the Bottom and Red Lights were two songs that have really done well for us. And then uh, because we hadn't toured the Tabasco and Sweet Tea record, we are just now getting to the place where we can really play that record all the time. And so that's been like a slow burn to get going. But now it feels like it's doing really well. Amazing. Well, that's good to hear. And and that brings us... Um... Oh my goodness to Hillbilly. And now you've already said you're you're working on a record and, and I'm gonna touch on what you've already mentioned that it's you know a little bit, you know, there's some effort there and and whatnot. But Hillbilly, the minute this one came out, actually before it came out, when y'all started teasing it with LV Shane and Cash Secor, you're like, oh, like instantly you go brilliant because LB Shane, just his voice with, with, you know, the Cadillac three sound, you just know, cause that's where he's gone. Right. With the backslider album and you go, okay. And then you hear that catch Secor is going to be, and then you immediately, this to me is a country <laughs> radio music director's dream. I think, cause you go, Oh, there's going to be some heart, like hardcore fiddle with the cat. Like what's going to happen. Then when you dropped it, I, I think that I I I I was obsessed with it for the first time I heard it. Um and then and just the sound of course, but the subject matter I find very interesting. And when we talk about going on tour and living that life, you know, um the message behind it almost gets lost in that, you know, in that sound, right? But when you really dive into the the clever writing of it and that hook and and just the two the two verses as well, um, for me, especially when Elvie comes in, it's just a beautifully crafted song. And for me as a fan, again, it 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 really feels like you guys have just elevated your shit. Like it really, really does. So with Hillbilly, like, tell me how this one came together. I'm really curious about the, yes, the writing process, the, like, you know, the subject matter, um, the production of it. How did this one come together? Uh, LV and Catch being on this. Please explain. I'm dying to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it was, it was pretty random. So we, 
we have a mutual couple manager friends and one of them works with with LV and it just had been suggested for a while like we need to get you guys to write and um you know that we were totally down i think he's he was a fan of us we were a fan of him it just had never happened and um there was a random we were on tour last year with Miranda Lambert and Little Big Town and there was a random weekend that came up and we just said hey like why don't you see if LV would want to come out and ride the bus and write with us on the bus because we do a lot of our writing on the road and so if we were going to write stuff for him or we we're going to write for Cadillac and we didn't really know what it would be um the bus would be a good place to do it so he was free he said yes he came out on the bus we'd never really hung out before but it was just like immediate like we just got along really really well um and i think we we wrote a song the first day and then that second day after we kind of gotten to know each other a little bit um i had noticed that he has a tattoo kind of on his shoulder that says hillbilly mm. and um and i i had earlier that week it had this idea that i'd written in my phone that was literally just kind of the the hillbilly flip like the hillbilly what you're doing on that hillbilly thing yeah and and i just brought it up to him and was just like hey like i got this little thing and i see you got this tattoo like it seems like we're probably supposed to write this um and we really quickly like got the chorus and jaron came in from uh uh, getting lunch or something and and we just kind of played him that chorus and he was like what the hell like where did that come from you know and he was like all excited and we went back on the back of the bus and jaron we we record a lot on the back of the bus so jaron got his electric guitar out and came up with that riff and we just kind of spent the rest of the day writing the verses and um we had a song by the end of that night and and so that was that was really fun and um you know, then we sat on it for a little while. It's like we were playing it on the, uh, we were playing that demo on the tour. So like Miranda and Little Big Town were hearing the song and we're like fans of it. So we kind of knew that it would was working. Um, and and somewhere along the way, we got the idea of of reaching out to Catch, and and he, he was gracious enough to say yes. And, and uh, we just thought a fiddle on a song called Hillbilly would, would be kind of fun. And uh, you know, and so he came in and held it. It was just like a couple tapes at the studio, like 20 or 30 minutes. And and that was kind of it, you know. And then it took us a little while to mix it and do all this stuff. But, you know, it, it, has, it was last May, I think, when we wrote it. And so, you know, we got it out within eight months or so after that kind of all happened. And it was, uh, it was a fun one. It was, it was kind of the one that really kick-started us in this direction that we're on now for this new record it we needed kind of a rocker that felt fresh to us and that one did and you know even like with that I, like i said it, it was the, the minute i hit play i was excited even before as i mentioned before i hit play um just just knowing those the, the two featured you know uh artists on this song it is killer. And so you've mentioned again, you're working on a, a record and, and whatnot. And I'm curious now, again, going from Country Fuzz uh, to Basco and now this upcoming one, can you, if you can, when you mentioned, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky at this point, uh, you briefly mentioned, I'm, I'm curious as to why, like, what can we expect with that in mind? Like, like what's, what's going on? Right. What can we expect from from uh, TC3 next? Well, you know, it's honestly, it's been a it's been kind of like a crazy couple of years. So I mean, since we put out the Tabasco record, um, you know, there was obviously the pandemic. I had I've had two. Or I guess I got married and I've had two kids. Wow. Jaren's son is five. Um, Jaren's. Jaren's dad passed away last last year and there's just been a lot of like life stuff going on and so um we just kind of needed a breather to figure out where to go next you know mm. it's like we don't want to like be all grown up or anything but at the same time it's like there was a lot of life stuff going on and so we we were you know changing and growing up a lot and so we've been just trying to figure out like 
what do we want to write about? What do we want to say? How do we, how do we want to say it? And, and I think with all of that, it's just taken a little time that said, it's like musically, it's still, we sound like we sound, um, you know, and I think that that might change a little bit from one record to another, as far as Tabasco and sweet tea to any of our other records. But, um, you know, there's never going to be a record that doesn't sound like what the three of us can do together. Cause that's kind of all we know how to do. Mm. Um, we're not, we're not gonna be able to sound like Keith Urban or whoever else, you know? Um, and that's okay because Keith yeah. sounds like Keith and that's yeah. exactly, you know, that's great. So, um, a lot of it for us is, I guess my point is like a lot of it has been just trying to figure out what we want to say more than like what we want it to sound like. And, and so we've been working on that. Um, I don't, I don't know if this is live or if this is going to air some other time, but um, okay. Well, I, we, we started teasing a song today that I just by, saw it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there'll be a song out over the next whatever, 48 hours. And um and that's that's going to be a special one. Um, I'm not I'm not going to give a ton away, but it's it's one that it it's subject matter wise is something we've never really done before, and I'm excited for that to get out because it's a little it's serious and like a little heavier and um and I think a different side to us than we've shown before, and it'll be interesting to see how everybody likes it. But I I'm I'm excited that we're putting it out, and also like just kind of proud of us for doing it so um it'll be good well i'm 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 pumped literally just sitting here getting ready to speak with you today neil i i popped open um the cadillac three on instagram and saw the tease and i was like get the hell out of here like it but that's you know i have to tell you i think that that's um incredible when 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 as a fan you can see a tease of a new song and you have no idea what it's going to sound like. And and then after Hillbilly, especially now I'm going, I have no idea what it's even going to be about. You know, I would have guessed Hillbilly would have been sure. a song, you know, about. Holy shit, just having a great time. Right. And and causing all kind of trouble. But as you said uh, at the beginning of the conversation, y'all have been together, grew up together. Right. Um, And now, you know as Cadillac three or some form or whatever, 20 years doing this almost. Right. So it makes sense that you would, your music in subject matter absolutely would uh, grow and evolve. And I just think that that's great. And that's why I'm so excited for this new record, because again, if we get that TC three vibe, but now we're talking, cause I've grown with you. It feels like now we're talking to something that I can relate to at my age. I think that's just a, a beautiful uh, magical marriage, I think. And um, I have to say, you know, uh, before I say goodbye to you, I'm really excited as well, not just for the Cadillac 3 and what's coming out as far as a new record and new music, but your joint venture now that you announced recently with Warner, War Buddha with uh, Jaren yep. as a label. And I know we we first started speaking actually years ago when you were managing an artist that we were spinning here. Um so it's really great that you're you're working behind the scenes. But if you can, you know, give a little bit of detail about even what now you and Jaron um, add and bring now to the industry through this label that you you started and even your first signing, uh, Rhett, right? Just even listening to Rhett, you go, oh, yeah. my gosh. Like, so just, if you could, Neil, give us a little insight into that, what y'all are doing behind the scenes with the, as as the label, because I'm very curious um, to see what what that's yeah. going to be about. Yeah, well, I'm actually I'm sitting in the parking lot outside of our label office right now, which is exciting. And that's when I alluded to going to do some work. I'm coming to do some some label work and some TC3 work this afternoon. So, nice. yeah, no, it's it's been a cool it's been an exciting thing. Um so, I mean, like you mentioned, we've got a, a new label kind of joint venture with with Warner Records um, called War Buddha Records. And we announced a couple of weeks ago our first signing, a fantastic artist uh, named Rhett Madison that um, originally is from West Virginia and lives in Los Angeles now. Um, just incredible songwriter, storyteller, singer, um, and human. And... Um, 
you know, I think like we've talked about a, a, a few times already in this, it's like, we've been together a long time. We've been in the industry a long time. So kind of with that, we've got a, a lot of years of relationships. And, and one of those relationships is with one of the guys that now runs Warner records in LA, a, a guy named Aaron Bayshuk. And so we've known him for a long time. And this, this label really wouldn't exist without our, that relationship. And so I think it's kind of just a testament to trying to continue to, to do good work with good people and, and do it for the long haul, not, not do not, not make kind of short sighted decisions or like, you know, bad decisions or burn people or like, you know, get too high and low in this, in the industry, because it's like you make good relationships they turn into great friendships and like one day they might turn into you know be somebody that's running a record label and says hey do you want a record label too <laughs> um you know and so it's like opportunities like that don't happen unless you you know you kind of stick around long enough and we've been fortunate to be able to stick around long enough to have this opportunity but you know what what we're trying to do is is really just take our experiences as artists and and create for up and coming artists to be able to have a home where um they're going to be able to create the best music and the best art that they possibly can and the, and kind of know that they're going to be supported in that and i think that we've been fortunate and our situations in the past to have been at labels that have supported us and whatever it is that we were doing. And we still are at a label in big machine with the Cadillac three that does that for us. And this is an opportunity for us to kind of work with artists that, you know, back to our, the very beginning of this conversation that maybe remind us of things that we grew up on or that we were influenced by, or, you know, or pushing boundaries in the same way that, some artists back when we were kids did but they're doing it in 2023 and it's like they just need a shot and so it's like if we can be a place where those artists maybe get a shot like that would be the best case scenario and hopefully you know we have some wins along the way and if if we don't i the one thing i do know is we'll work with great people and we'll put out great music and the rest of it you kind of like you wait and see what happens you know but i think that that's what's exciting for us. And it has been a lot of fun. It's, it's, it's a, it's a new adventure, uh, even though we've still in the middle of all these other adventures that we've had going on for a long time. And it kind of like puts new energy into those, you know, into TC3 and into our songwriting and into all these other things that we're already doing. Um, it makes it all feel fresh. And so, yeah, we're excited about the label and I, I appreciate you asking about it. Absolutely. I, I, absolutely, Neil. And I, again, it, it goes back to being a, a, a huge fan of uh, the Cadillac 3 together and individually as well, um, from what I know of you guys, you know, uh, I mean, when I found out that y'all were, you know, coming out with your, your, you know, launching this record label, I have to say, because of who you are as, as TC3, but again, behind the scenes, having your names attached to this already made me check out Rhett and instantly I, I like I knew I was gonna love them because if y'all are throwing your names behind it it's just a sure bet that it's gonna be good pinup daddy is now on repeat um so <laughs> right so yeah, I she, think that she's really really, really great <laughs> she oh, really is like she's fantastic and she writes all that stuff by herself which is just incredible so I mean we are we're thrilled to to have her but it, I appreciate that and it's like it's it it means a lot to just to kind of hear you say that our names being associated with something would cause you to give it a listen because you know i think that obviously that would that's really about as high a compliment as you can give in regards to just what we're trying to do because oh, we just want to be like i said a, a positive place for people to be able to put out music so um just got to make sure we don't drag our name through the mud and everything will be all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Neil, I, no, I think you guys will be all right. I think your instincts, I think uh, after years and years and years of trusting your instincts and maybe 
you know, going over a line or two, right? Um, no, nah, you're going to be great uh, in this with this label. And I can't wait. I can't wait for this record and the new song to come out in a couple days from today. So, Neil, thank you very much for, like I said, taking the time in your very busy schedule to sit down and, and chat with us. And congratulations, you know, man, on everything that you've got going on right now. Thank you. I also on Sunday when I guess you guys posted the hillbilly gone number one on y'all's on the request or whatever it was. I, I honestly I had to do a double take because like like you were kind of alluding to, we don't get a ton of radio play. So I was like, wait, what is happening? <laughs> and I and I, I had to like go and kind of figure out what was going on. And then I was like, oh, this is awesome. I was like, I didn't even know that our song was getting played up there. And I really appreciate you playing the song and being such a fan of the band we uh we don't have that that often so i really appreciate it <laughs>